Raspberry Pi have just announced a new Raspberry Pi 500 and also the Raspberry Pi monitor. Let's take a closer look. Finally here, this is the Raspberry Pi 500 and also the Raspberry Pi monitor. This goes along nicely with the Raspberry Pi 500 and has been perfectly designed as a companion product. You can see there the buttons for controlling the volume and the brightness as well as switching the monitor on and off and it has this nice kickstand design or alternatively there is also these mounts on the back. You can just see the little grills there for these speakers and there's a nice little cutout right underneath the monitor at the centre where you can put the wires from the keyboard. So let's get this unboxed and we can have a look at what it can do. This is the Quad64 ARM Cortex A76 processor with 8 gigs of RAM, two micro HDMI ports up to 4K at 60 frames per second, two USB 3 ports, one USB 2 port, a gigabit Ethernet port, a micro SD card slot for the operating system and data storage, and a horizontal 40 pin GPIO header as well. It comes with the full Wi Fi capabilities of the Raspberry Pi 5 and Bluetooth 5.0 as well and it's powered by the usual 5 volt DC via USB-C connector. The 27 watt power supply will do nicely just for this. And it's all in this nice compact keyboard form factor. And it's priced at just $90. Now from a value perspective, you might think, well why don't I just buy a keyboard and a regular Raspberry Pi 5 with 8 gigs? Uh, it's actually cheaper to buy the Raspberry Pi 500, about $30 cheaper in fact. The new monitor is a 15.6 inch 16 by 9 ratio monitor. It's an IPS LCD with an anti-glare coating and it's a full HD 1080p video. So that's 920 by 1080. It has a 16.2 million color range and it's bright enough for everyday use even if it's just run by the Raspberry Pi power. So that's one of the interesting things about this monitor. It can be entirely powered by the, the power supply from the Raspberry Pi just by a USB connection from the Pi 500 to the monitor. Alternatively, you can provide full power if you want to get the full volume and brightness that the monitor can output. As a full size HDMI connector, 1.4 compliant if you're interested in that, 3.5mm stereo jack for outputting audio. It also has a built in pair of stereo speakers as well, 2 times 1.2 watts. And it supports a whole range of different display rates. You can actually use this as a regular monitor for anything that will give an HDMI output. And it's priced at $100. I've got some pros and cons about this having used it for a little while now. I've had this for about a week. So pros wise, this is the latest and greatest of the all-in-one Raspberry Pi in a keyboard design form factor. It's compact, really nice tidy design, great value for money. It has double the RAM of the previous model, the 400 had four gigs of RAM. And it's a high quality keyboard, actually typing on the keyboard, it's got a really nice feel to it, really nice action, great for regular use. Cons wise, there is no PCIe connector for AI accelerators or NVMe storage. I think that's the only miss with this particular launch. It would really be nice if we could have had an extra storage there just for the reliability and the speed wise. And also the, the choice of being able to use AI accelerators on this as well. It doesn't come with a mouse or a power supply or SD card. These can be purchased separately or you can actually buy it all as a bundle via the desktop kit version. Now monitor wise, pro wise, uh, it's a full 1080p monitor, 15.6 inch, perfect for desktop and classroom use. It's a really good size, it like, feels like a, a large laptop size of screen. It's got a built-in kickstand, which means you can sort of fold it out and stand it on the desk with no extra kind of mount required. Or if you want to use the Visa mount, it has one of those on the back as well. It's got some built-in speakers, it has a full-size HDMI port, which is really good for using with other 
Raspberry Pis, for example, and it has the audio output as well if you want to plug this into some larger speakers, for example, or a pair of headphones. It's available in red and white at launch and black in 2025, a little bit later on, and it can be powered by a Raspberry Pi using a USB cable. Cons wise, the speakers are a little bit tinny. That's probably the only thing I would say in the negative on this particular product. Uh, there's no real bass at all. It is quite, it's like listening to a pair of headphones left on the table. Uh, if you plug in the full power, you will get a slightly louder audio, uh, but the, again, the bass isn't really there. This isn't really for that kind of usage. It's, it's just to provide you with some basic output uh, via a pair of speakers on the front. So this monitor is the perfect combo with the new Raspberry Pi 500. They've kind of been designed together and you can tell that. The cables go nicely underneath that little groove underneath the monitor and they're nicely tidy out the way. And it's got a really sharp image and looks great in all lighting conditions and at different viewing angles as well. And you'll always get that with the IPS type display. One of the things I did notice is the new power button on the Raspberry Pi 500. That's where the delete button used to be on the Raspberry Pi 400, which I'm showing here. You can see there that it's got the number pad and the Pi 500 doesn't actually have that anymore. And they've had to sacrifice that to provide the power button. But this is far more useful than the, uh, the number lock. I don't actually know anyone who actually used that. So I'm really interested to know what you make of the new Raspberry Pi 500 and the new monitor. Let me know in the comments below if this is something that you're going to you're going to buy or whether this is something you're going to give a miss. And I hope you enjoyed this really short video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.